Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Terima kasih Busi Majlis yang berbahagia Datuk Wan Suraya, Wan Lazi, uh, Sekjen tu MED yang berbahagia Datuk Norifah Kamso, Chairman Bank Rakyat, yang berbahagia Datuk Rosman Muhammad, Acting Managing Director Bank Rakyat. Insya Allah, uh, subject to further due diligence and observe, observing corporate governance. We'll get to what we're supposed to be doing in terms of trying to complete the team to manage Bank Rakyat. Board of Directors of Board of Directors and Management Committee of Bank Rakyat, distinguished guests, members of media, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam, salam sejahtera. First and foremost, I would like to congratulate Bank Rakyat for holding this important inaugural integrity conference early this year. Although I will get a direct feedback from the Prime Minister this morning when I sent him to his car, but after knowing him for 20 months in the government administration, I can feel the body, or I can see the body language. He is very, he's indeed pleased with what you are doing today and hope we sustain what we have set out to do and try to improve our governance in trying to become, hopefully, I told to Noripa to change the name to your sustainable bank, sustainable bank of choice, and I think she will do it soon. Uh, bank of choice is also narrated, or other some other banks caption, I believe. So we must put in. Since we have started, we launched it a few weeks ago as a sustainable, with the sustainable goals that we want to be a party with and hopefully by having that name we are become more visible or we, give, we, we are giving the right optics to the, to the stakeholders and to the beneficiaries. It is indeed timely that Malaysians take some time today to share and exchange our perspective on transparency, integrity, corporate governance and this our current issues, which has been bedeviled, as Prime Minister said, in a different language, has bedeviled Malaysia over the last few years, in, in which the new government is working very hard to rectify and make it right. Now, as a minister in charge of Bank Rakyat, I would like to extend my very warm welcome to all of our panelists and speakers who have kindly accepted the invitation to participate. Indeed, some, in fact, some of them we restarted the session this morning before the arrival of Yama Pramatun Tumade. The presence today of so many leading organizations and policymakers and experts demonstrate the strength of our shared commitment to fight corruption and promote a new culture of integrity. Ladies and gentlemen, some people may question why the Bank Rakyat organizing an integrity conference? These are many reasons. Why not? At least, or the least, the bank's serious commitment under the MED to cultivate a good governance culture among the bank's employees. This in turn will help to improve work processes and enhance openness and transparency in our bank's operation. I would also like to underscore the not so well known fact that Bank Rakyat is the first bank in Malaysia to establish a corporate integrity department. Is that a claim or is that true, Dr. Noripa? It's true, he said. It's not one off, but the first. Now, through this initiative, a special unit officer, a special officer from MACC has already been assigned to the bank to monitor and report on integrity practices within the bank. Various programs, as we know, have also been con conducted by the bank to cultivate a good governance culture in Malaysia including its recent, recent collaboration with the Sarawak Islamic, Islamic Council to implement the financial integrity program for most of Pink, Pink Masjid in Sarawak. We may feel when we talk about masjid, it's insignificant. But we start with small, we want to integrate or rather we want to inculcate this value which had been we've been taught when we were small, but never been practiced because we take things for granted. The theme of the forum 
that we have heard this morning or you will continue to be engaged in the discussion in the installation of reforms in the new Malaysia fits well with the Pakatan Harapan government commitment to usher in a new era of strong governance and integrity in our ecosystem and to get rid of corrupt practices and abuses of power. Moving forward, we have developed, as you know, the NACP, which is the National Anti-Corruption Plan, launched by the Prime Minister to protect the rights of the people to stop leakages of public fund to strengthen our national security and to spur economic growth. In addition, under the NACP, MED has been given the mandate as a lead agency to enhance aspects of integrity and anti-corruption in national entrepreneurship program. In this regard, MED through its agency, particularly BPKU, that supervise contractors, INSCAN, IKM, and TACON, have introduced integrity modules in all its entrepreneurship training programs. In the long run, this integrity module will be made compulsory not only by MED, but all agencies and ministries in Malaysia. I was just talking to Datuk Noripah this morning for the case of Bank Rakyat. You want to show some leading example. Maybe we can start all employees to sign a couple of forms. For example, conflict of interest policy, business ethic policy. And the two examples that actually demonstrate that we are serious about it and we are bound by the law or by the rules and regulation that's been enforced by the government. Now, not only that, the government has also listed integrity and governance as one of the 15 guiding principles which represent the foundation that will drive the nation to achieve the shared prosperity division 2030. The aspiration of these principles to combat corruption and optimize government resources toward achieving the targets set under the SPV, namely to make Malaysia a united, prosperous, and dignified nation where all the rakyat will be able to enjoy a decent standard of living by 2030. And it was mentioned specifically, and the SPV is basically to narrow the gap between the rich and poor, to narrow the gap between the districts, between urban and suburban and suburban and the rural areas. And in this regard, the government is committed to strengthen political stability, enhance the nation's prosperity, and unite the rakyat, celebrating ethnic and cultural diversity as the foundation of the nation state. The aspiration of the integrity and good governance in SPV 2030 is in line with our own NEP 2030 or DKN 2030 launched last year in July, which is aimed at building a comprehensive entrepreneurship ecosystem. If you notice, the DKN 2030 is basically the foundation for SPV 2030. Now, among the strategic highlighted in our DKN 2030 is to promote good governance that include enhancing IT-based procedures for business registration, reporting, and monitoring to ensure procedures are applied in a uniform manner to avoid corrupt behavior, favoritism, and nepotism, and of course, to promote, to promote understanding and increase access to information on business procedures, laws, and regulation to improve compliance. Now, recent corruption scandals in the private and public sectors have contributed strongly to the erosion of public trust in business, government, public institution, and the media and I think towards, uh, or rather in a very um, significant context is also it has reduced some form of confidence for foreign direct investment. This erosion of trust is the ideal settling, is the ideal setting when populism, populism protectionism, and exclusive nationalism can grow if left unchecked. We need to reverse these trends, and we are reversing it. We are serious about reversing it. We need to rest, restore the trust of our citizens in the government, in our democracy, 
and the ability of global integration and openness to improve life from, for the better. When I talk about seriousness, as a member of government, there are cries that we are not moving things as fast. People say economy is not looking good, but we are doing it in the right way. It takes time for, make, for us to make a decision, or at least to get people to understand why we make that decision. There are promises that we made. We are trying to deliver the best that we can, and we hope this will help people to understand the government will continue, will continue to improve if we need to, to refine if we need to, the previous policies set by the previous government. Today, we are managing the same people with different expectations. The people threw away the previous government with expectation that they could live better. And we are doing just that right now. And I think for the year 2020, it's not an overstatement, but I think the economy will get better, inshallah. Ladies and gentlemen, combat, combating corruption is one of the activity or rather one of our strong focus right now while we try to execute our policy, while we want to implement projects in our effort to beat people's expectations. And today, I must say, on records, we are heading in the direct direction. And we can see, as what Tun Otomadi said, we don't see corrupt practices. We don't see when we make decisions, governance are not followed. We don't see, there are, as I said, pot shots, there are criticism from the detractors. But we believe we are confident, we can give the confidence back to the people that the economy or rather the development of the country is in the right track. The effective adoption of good co corporate governance best practices has the twin effects of improving both short-term and long-term corporate performance. Organizations that have embraced good corporate governance have found real and significant competitive advantage in the form of easy access to fund enhanced brand image and reputation as well as the ability to attract and retain quality workforce. To name a few, all of which will go a long way in ensuring sustainable economic development. Good corporate governance effort also allow companies to distinguish themselves from competitors and add value to their brand. Better brand value proposition translates to better customer satisfaction, especially in a world where consumers, employees, and investors are becoming more discerning. At the same time, there seems to be a growing demand for cooperation organizations to be more socially accountable. The call for increased good social responsibility is becoming louder by the day. Throughout this forum, I hope you will be looking at inequality, exclusion, and disillusionment of society as the real cause of corruption. You will discuss how to tackle corruption in development cooperation in climate finance, in infrastructure projects, and particularly in the SME sector. You will also look at, the, at preventing policy. You will also look at preventing policy capture or misuse and countering bribery and ensuring independence for regulators and promoting due diligence and responsible business conduct. We have to stay ahead of the game. To do this, we have to work together sharing our experiences and coordinating our actions. Now before I just say thank you to Bank Rakyat and the rest of the team members who organized this forum and also, of course the participant, I just want to say this or rather quote a famous American writer, Buckminster Fuller once said that on personal integrity hangs humanity fate. I add also on environmental fate because it's relevant to our SDG and you have, to have, you have coined the word planet, although we have series of criticism about the word planet, but we move forward because we are now living in a borderless world. 
we cannot afford not to take heed of what happened outside what we call our borders. What happened in Australia affect our climate. What happened in Iraq and Iran affect your prosperity, affect your trade, affect the complete supply chain. When America, as Tun said, enforce sanctions, we have an effect. We can't export goods and products what we produce to Iran, for example, or to any other country where sanctions are imposed by United Nations. So therefore, everything boils back to integrity that will affect humanity and, of course, our environment. It is certainly true that the culture of integrity makes our economies more productive, our public sector more efficient, our institution more trusted, our societies and our economies are more inclusive and cohesive. In short, integrity delivers better lives all over. I wish all of you to have a productive and successful conference and forum. Thank you all and good morning. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh.